Hello and welcome back to this series of advanced monthly tutorials for Earth Trick Simulator 2. Today we are going to continue with the interchange construction and since we have the base work done, we now have to worry about how we landscape this interchange. So we are going to put trees, terrain and other landscape elements that would really finish up this interchange. And at the end of this tutorial you have a really nicely decorated interchange you can show to all your friends or family or whatever. Anyway. Oh, okay, here we have this interchange again, and uh, between recordings I have made a few changes, a bit, a few tweaks. Uh, for instance, I've made this bridge lower because the height it had before was a bit ridiculous, and I didn't th thought it, was, it would fit there. Uh, furthermore, I have um, set up uh, the terrain uh, transitions here which I've showed earlier, but uh, I left it out because it would be, mean a lot of repetition. And I've set all the terrain shapes of all these, these prefabs and roads to plain, so just perfectly flat. And what we, have, what we are going to do now is uh, fill up these gaps See, we, we have here. So, um, first I would like, for, uh, for these gaps I would like you to introduce you to a thing called a Bezier patch. Bezier patch is actually a a four by four grid with uh, nodes where you can move, and you see that when you move this um, this whole patch deforms, and this is usually a really nice thing to fill up gaps like this. So what we are going to do first is lower this a bit, and the first thing you do is make sure the corners are a bit below the terrain. I think I will set the noise here level power to zero and distance type to middle. We worry about the rest later. Um, so we set the corners here. A bit below the surface. So why do we place them a bit below the surface? Well, that would get the transitions uh, from the normal terrain to the Bezier patch um, quite see uh, in a that would make the, the transition quite seamless, and uh, you would not see any gaps then. Okay, I move them while I hold the Alt key so they will inherit the height, and now we have this one here, which I want to inherit the height from this point. Maybe a bit higher here, and we do the same on the other side. And maybe a bit lower, no, a bit lower. And getting this to follow the curve, the inner curve is quite tricky, and usually you have to really move these things outwards. And or and or downwards, okay. So this is there. This is not an exact science. Uh, it just you just improvise along the way and see when it works. Right. And now it's setting up the rest of the edge notes. to lift a bit on the this side yes this sometimes needs really careful tweaking is just 
just did about right. Uh, you can see that we have filled this piece of terrain pretty quickly. <laughs> Which problems and it gets even better. So if we set this terrain to same across here, we can also put in some uh, trees. Then we can just scale this down and set the density to 350. And some bushes on scale on the density of 300. And now we have a uh, quite nicely uh, a center of the loop. And to refinish this thing off, um, we just need some stamps, which are just the stamp is a a some kind of paintbrush where you can make the terrain a different texture. And I really like to use this one, cross dry tall, and you will see why soon. So let's click this in pattern, and. Now you see, this looks a lot better than just the same ter terrain texture everywhere. And now it looks uh, like it's dr the grass is a bit drier underneath the trees than besides the road. Okay, so we are going to copy paste it over here and rotate this like 180 degrees. But of course, this needs tweak tweaking too because this loop is a bit smaller than the, than the other loop. But all right, we can do that. We can handle that. Otherwise, this would be advanced math pick tricks anyway, because you should know how to handle this by now. It looks a bit freaky. Here, a bit of movement there. And you can see that once you have one of the, those pieces, one of those uh, loop frames ready, you can easily copy to the other side and do this in just one minute. Okay, um, now we're going to fill up uh, this with another BG pitch. We are just going to repeat the same procedures here. And here we also have the problem with the inner curve, so where you have to move these nodes a bit more inwards. But alright, if you know the logic, and you will probably figure out how this works. bit to, to the bottom and we are going to put this also a bit downward Set the distance to middle, noise power to zero, and let's see. Ingles main, 5300 bushes and trees, scale 60% to 100%. Et voila! There we have uh, this part of the ramp ready. So it already looks looks quite uh, quite adequately landscaped. Copy and paste it again. You see, we still use the same tricks over and over again. 
and I would therefore we used to say that mapping is not re is not really that difficult. It's just a lot of work. You have what you do is not really super complicated, but it, you have to do it so many times that therefore that therefore it will take a lot of time. And even when you just copy paste like me, because you really have to customize things to make it fit. And you don't want also don't want to have cross sticking out of the road, unless that's the thing you really want to go for. But most of the time you won't. You won't. So we have this part of the internet clipping done, which is safe often. Right, um, now for the outer terrain. Um, there are a few tricks I would like to show you, and one that you trick uses the snapping uh, tool. So for instance, what if we just remove the terrain here? And what we get now. What, what you may know is that prefabs can't use can't uh, have stamps, but terrain pieces can. So what we are going to do is use the snapping tool in our advantage and just ma make a new piece of terrain that has the, the snap to the to this road here, and therefore making a quite seamless transition between the terrain, generate, ge terrain generated by the road item and the terrain generated by the terrain item. So you you can paint all of this, but uh, you can, yeah, yes, you can paint all of this, but uh, at, at least uh, you you can avoid the issue that the prefabs can't be painted. And in this ca case, I also wa wanted to use it to make the uh, landscape more simplified. So this this uh, terrain shape, so it will only go like, be really round, like this, so that this part doesn't really get too much disturbed. And we can, and we can apply the same trick here and then just uh, set train to low 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 hit plane five 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 hundred zero point five same on the other side and temporarily set this to zero so it'll so it can only slap to that piece of terrain. And now we set this back to, tw to 20. Probably set this to plane 2. And as a result, you see that we have a piece of terrain that just continues like that. And seamlessly merge to the road. And that's a pretty neat trick. And if you want to extend this further, so you can paint this all you want, and don't be bothered with the inner inner landscaping. At some parts, I want to extend the terrain a bit. 40. This one needs to 10. Oh, and here we see a gap, and we are going to use an, uh, another train piece here. Let's see if we can make this flat. Free round rotation off and the height wait maybe copy this height yeah I think that that will work better set and 
but this time I'll set the terrain length to 10 and then play. Okay, I'm going to rotate a bit. The keys want to work sometimes. I don't know, sometimes the uh, keyboard shortcut could fail to work. seems to be okay. Maybe a length of 15. And your gap is gone. Just nicely closed off. And here we have another terrain gap which we're probably going to, to solve in, this, in the same uh, way. Right here. Fifty. And since I set all the rain up to the the top level to down, to the down, you don't have to bark with it anymore actually. This looks gentle enough. But I want to have it down to the... set this to plane. So I can get this down to the this level. And what do you know? You see that we have a quite a uh, nice terrain transition, nice uh, close terrain, and it looks like one piece. While well, it is actually a much larger piece of terrain. And as you will see if I will select this piece of terrain again and use the brush. I guess see we just can happily brush this this whole thing. and add some trees to it and with the trees I will show you another trick so we set the birch to dense starting from let's see, 100 and start from 5 meters so um, you will see that trees will clip to this part of the landscape and you don't want that. So we now add a no vegetation area and as you can see this thing removes the vegetation from a certain part of this of this uh, terrain uh, piece. If you click on properties you can change the size and for this case we just use the size of a radius of 40 meters. And I think we need more of them, so we just add another one. Size third, and forty. And now I have no vegetation. Forty. And as you can see, the sunken 
trees are now removed. So that's a not nice little thing. Ooh. Just about to get here. That's not, that's not nice. Just a bit here. Maybe add some free node rotation and set the pitch to zero. Right. No gap anymore. As you can see, with some bit of trickery, you can get uh, something that looks like a single piece of terrain. And, and actually set up pretty simply. But uh, in fact, it's a bit more complex than that. So it may need a bit of tweaking. But we already have a nice piece of terrain here. And other than that, it's basically repeating the previous steps on the other side. But since I don't want to bore you with this, and because it's already taking too long, I would like you to leave you with that. And imagine that too, that you can do this on other sides of the interchange too. So that's it for today with the advanced terrain tricks. And I hope you've learned uh, some, some things from, from about this. And uh, I will see you next time.